it's quite a unique family setup, this one. We are in southern Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Known for its ageing and conservative population, the Sunshine State perhaps isn't the kind of place you'd expect to find this progressive family unit. There's two mums, one dad, three kids, all living in the one family home. My understanding at this point is Linda was with Christopher, like they, they were a couple. But now I think Linda and Maddie are the couple romantically. Linda and Chris married in 2016 and had two kids together. But after six years, Linda dropped the bombshell that she was gay. The couple broke up, but continued to live together. Then Linda met girlfriend Maddie and moved her into the home she shared with Chris. When Maddie and Linda decided to have a baby, Linda asked Chris to be the dad. He said yes, and Maddie gave birth to Arlo. Now all three kids and three parents live under one roof by a choice in a co-parenting idyll. I'm desperate to know how does this family make it work? Is there some kind of hierarchy? And where does Chris fit in all of this? Because from the outside looking in, it's like you've got two women in this loving relationship. He's living with his ex and a new woman. Hi, how are you? 34-year-old digital creator Linda and 37-year-old entrepreneur Chris are not quite yet divorced. And do you prefer Chris or Christopher? Chris. Chris, Chris, Chris. Christopher's except, too formal. She, except well, no, when no, no, I call no. him Chris, he gets really she, weird about it. <laughs> well, it's because it's lately that you started doing that. She normally calls me Christopher. But Fine. Family call me Christopher and then everybody else is Chris. So I'm um, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, thank you so much for allowing me into your home. Of course, we're excited um, to have no, you. No, likewise. How is it this tidy? You've got three kids. Oh, well, they're not sorry. home, that's why. And where's Maddie? At work. She's at work. She'll be back around like four. Great. So can I have a look around? Of course. Will I take my shoes off? Uh, no, you can keep them on if really? you're comfy with them oh, on. Yeah. Let me take them off. Well, so I like shoes off. Yeah, she likes shoes yeah. on. I wear my shoes, so it's totally Let up to me you. take them off. This is Christopher's wing. Your own wing? Yeah, but his room is actually right here. That's why it's his wing. Oh, so this is your bedroom? Well, it used to be over there. <laughs> so you two used to share a bedroom? We used to yes. share a bedroom. Yes. A romantic relationship. Uh-huh. And then uh, we separated. Uh-huh. I came out later in life. And we decided, you know, that we enjoy parenting together. That wasn't necessarily the problem in our relationship. But we decided to move him to this side of the house. And we were going to continue to co-parent together. So you two are no longer intimate. No. And then you and Maddie have a bedroom elsewhere. Yeah, let, let's go show you. Can I see your room? <laughs> Thank my you. Old Chris, this yeah. is your old bedroom. Isn't that Our mad? It was, okay, to be fair, he would fall asleep on the couch all the time, so it's like always been my room. <laughs> That's true. Chris, your room is immaculate. Oh, she designed it. <laughs> The kids run back and forth, yeah. you know, especially early in the morning. <laughs> the boys are five and three years old, and the youngest is just four months. So this is Arlo's room. So this is your four months old. Yeah. So Maddie carried your third child. Mm -hmm. yeah. My child. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Our child. But... <laughs> yeah. We're three parents in this house. Uh, can I see your bedroom? No, of course. Your old bedroom. <laughs> but now you and Maddie. Yeah. yeah. And this is our room. Oh, cute. Look at this. Just 10 months after Chris learned his wife was gay, Linda's new girlfriend, Maddie, moved in. Here's our little family wall. Something we did to kind of incorporate all of us together. So this is Maddie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And where are you two here? Hawaii. Actually, that was our one year anniversary. Oh. How long have you been together? It'll be two years next month or so. Oh, so still kind of a honeymoon period. Mm -hmm. Oh, how fun. Oh yeah, it's definitely the honeymoon period. So where are all the children right now? Uh, daycare and school. And I imagine it's just pretty non-stop with three kids. Yeah. 
I've just had a little girl, my baby's eight months old. Mm -hmm. And it is so hard when there are two of you. I can sort of see the appeal of having <laughs> an extra pair of hands. The best part is if anyone is having an off day yeah. or if you need a minute, you can take a minute. Yeah. There's, parenting is no off and on switch. Linda's like super accommodating. Chris is a real sweetheart. We know loads of marriages end up in divorce. And this is maybe quite a radical alternative. What was a bit jarring was when I asked Linda if I could see her bedroom. And Chris was like, oh yeah, it's my old bedroom. Because of course, them two were in a romantic relationship. And now he's elsewhere and there's a, a woman that's taken his spot. Will we go and get the kids? Yeah, let's do it. With three children aged five and under. Fingers crossed, Elliot is in a good mood today. I'm interested to find out the part each of the three parents play in the kids' lives. So Chris is Elliot and Owen's biological father? Correct. And does Chris see Arlo as his one of his sons? Yeah, so we say, um, you know, he's a sperm donor because of the method, right? But we say he's a dad because of how he wanted to be, like, father figure. And just like he is with the other kids. So Chris really is a father to all three boys. Mm -hmm. You're the mother to all three boys. Yeah. And, uh, and Maddie's role? We call her, like, the bonus mom to the big kids because, you know, she helps with everything. And she is the one to play soccer with them. She's a little more like hands-on when it comes to that kind of stuff. And so she truly is the bonus mom. Maddie and I jokingly were talking about when we first met, like literally our second date, um, talking about how, you know, she wants to be a mom. And I'm like, okay, great, I have two kids. You can have one of mine. <laughs> She's like, no, I, I want to carry. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, would it be weird if Christopher was your donor? Um, Wait, you're having this conversation on your second yeah, date? Yeah. Um, when I met Maddie, there was just no doubt in my mind how much I was falling in love with her. Linda. And, you know, here we are. And we did it all. It's Hi, amazing. Elliot. <laughs> I suppose what makes your situation unique is you're all living under the one roof. Yeah. Which would take some adjusting. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Owen, okay. you want to say hi, Stacey? She's going to be spending the night with us. I'm going to sleep on the sofa. Is that all right? Is that okay? She can sleep on your couch? No. no. Am I in the garden with the dogs? <laughs> Owen, how old are you? Back at the house. It'd be easy to forget this isn't a run-of-the-mill family. <laughs> no, no, you've forgotten your age. So... <laughs> I want to find out how Linda went from a traditional marriage with two kids to something so unconventional. However much you feel comfy offering, can you mm -hmm. talk me through what your relationship with Chris was like? You know, I always remember, like, the intimacy has always been, like, an issue for me. So then the thing with Christopher is that we had babies, and so then I started blaming you know, me being tired or touched out or the breastfeeding on, you know, all of that. The lack of sex. Yeah. Well, everything, you know. It's just like it wasn't that, that connection that I always thought I was missing. And so I was searching for it. But at the time, I was actually searching for it, like, in children. I was like, I, I want to feel, you know, that something. And so I had kids. And I was just like, I'm like, what is it? I, at one point, I was asking my friend, I'm like, do I need to have, like, an open marriage? Have someone else sleep with him? But it just, um, that was just the start of really figuring out what the problem was. Linda is one of a growing number of women who discover they're lesbian after being married to a man. So when you got with Chris, did you in your heart of hearts believe you were straight? Or did you, did you know you were gay? No, I definitely thought um, that I was straight. And so I think growing up and like... Western Florida, you know, kind of not really being exposed to a lot growing up um, was why it kind of took me a long time to, like, figure that out, you know. But ultimately, like, we're still 
together. Like we're going to be in this life together, whether we like it or not, because we have these kids. So it's like, we might as well make the best of it. While there's no going back to the way things were with Chris, now one thing's abundantly clear. You are the most sense my life has ever made, wow. Linda and girlfriend Maddie are head over heels in love. So Linda's written that to Maddie, or Maddie's written that to Linda. It's quite profound, isn't it? You're the most sense my life has ever made. I can't pretend that me and Kev go around writing such lovely things on our, on our mirrors. <laughs> I cannot wait to meet the woman who was chosen to have a baby with her girlfriend's ex-husband. Hey, Mama's going to be home soon. Are you excited? In suburban Florida, I'm finding out if three parents are better than two. With ex-husband and wife Linda and Christopher and Linda's girlfriend, 36-year-old Maddie. Likewise, so thank you so, so much. Maddie is a medical practitioner and has just gone back to work after having baby Arlo, who was fathered by Chris. Hi, girl. Hi. I'm keen to find out how parenting duties are shared. You're not pooping, are you? In this household of two mums and one dad. <laughs> what time do you go to bed? Are you allowed to go a bit later because it's the weekend? A little bit later. Very. Like five minutes. We're pretty, uh, <laughs> we, by we, I mean uh, she is, is the really strict one. Yeah. She gives them whatever they want for breakfast, whatever they want for dinner. <laughs> well, someone's got to uh, try to make them eat, like, dinner food. I'm only starting to scratch the surface of how the dynamics work here. And right now, the bedtime routine takes precedence. Mine includes... Pure luxury. A blow-up mattress in the living room. Good night. See you mañana. Thank you. I can see why some people would find the family quite peculiar. I can't imagine Chris and Linda together, like, romantically. Which, of course, they did at one time. Linda and Maddie are super affectionate. I do wonder what it's been like for Chris. Because I don't think many people could watch their ex-wife fall in love with somebody else under the same roof and be genuinely happy for them. this. Yes! Owen! And then do that. Yes! Oh my, look at you. Oh, oh careful. How did you sleep? Sleep in other bed. That's right. How did you sleep? Close my eye and I go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Owen was two years old when his family dynamics changed. And being a new mum myself, I'm interested to know how the kids find having three parents under the one roof. So when the boys wake up, do they they go into your room? And when it became apparent that Mummy was sharing a bed with Maddie, yeah. how did Owen and Elliot respond? Because presumably there was a time when they would come into Mummy and Daddy's bed. Our room, yeah. <laughs> Initially, Elliot, a little bit in the very beginning, um, I'd say like after a month or so that I was like here almost every day, he, he started like pulling away just a little bit. He was the one initially that like was all over me. We, like we couldn't be separated. And then I think he kind of was like, "All right, what's going on?" You know. Um, and then we just gave him like the information. We we just talked to them and explained to them like, you know, I'm in love with mommy. Mommy's in love with Maddie. What do the boys call you, Maddie? 
So it's funny, Owen couldn't say my name when he met me. Uh, so I was my daddy, that's how he said Maddie. So that's why you'll hear him call me daddy. He knows my name is Maddie, but he just stuck with daddy. Which is not stepping on anyone's toes because he goes by Papa. I don't, I don't go by daddy, so, so it doesn't bother me at all. So I think it's hilarious. <laughs> it's like, it is absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm ready for spitball. Spitball. <laughs> This morning, I've been instructed to get ready for an all-American sport I can't say I'm familiar with. Pickle. Pickle. Pick pickleball. Twice a month, Maddie and Chris play opposite each other in pickleball. Wish me luck. Without Linda. So cool. Guys, let's play pickleball. Ready? Oh, whoops, oh, sorry. I have to keep it in the green box. Okay, Ooh. whoops. <laughs> I didn't know what pickleball was two hours ago, but now I'm like fully, fully signed up. Pickleball's more tiring than it looks. So I take some time out to get Maddie's perspective on how this all started. So you and Linda, your two-year anniversary is coming up. Yeah. A lot has happened in two years. Oh my God, so much. Uh, we met on a dating app, right? I was swiping, um, came across her picture. I thought I was going to get catfished. There's <laughs> the her picture. I was like, oh my goodness, this is not a real person. So I asked her to go out that night. We had, a, we had a great evening, we spoke all night. And she told me obviously her situation, I told her mine, and I left there uh, after we had a kiss. And uh, it, was, it was quite beautiful. It was sparks, you know, it was, oh. she's electrical. Um, <laughs> and when she explains what her situation looked like, did you think, I've sort of bitten off more than I can chew here? Uh, I left there thinking, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I getting myself into? This is nuts, and then also, but this could be amazing. All these thoughts were racing through my mind, back and forth, back and forth. And so by the time I got home, uh, I think she had already texted me, like, when am I going to see you again? And uh, we made plans and we had a second date and it went swimmingly. And uh, the rest is history. The rest is literally history. Very few people get to like their mid-30s and they haven't had serious relationships prior. Like my boyfriend, who's been married three times. Really? Yeah. Wow. My friends call me Anne of Cleves. <laughs> And obviously you don't ever think that you're gonna fall in love with someone who's been with three women yeah. before, yeah. but yeah. life is life. Yeah. I never thought I'd be in this predicament right. either, but um, I'm so happy where I am. You and Chris seemingly have this pretty solid friendship now. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, for I mean, Chris, it's gonna be difficult for him and for us with regards to, you know, him finding his other half and his happiness. And we want that so bad for him and, um, I think that's probably going to be our, our biggest thing is that whoever he chooses will probably be involved in our, in our lives and our kids' lives. And I think that that'll probably be the, the most difficult thing uh, for us as a unit, for the safety of our children. And I get that. Who do you think would be good for Chris? What, what kind of woman? An open-minded woman. She's going to have to be very open-minded. Yeah. I think if you're looking at this, you could think, why... Why is it so important for Chris that he's still very much on the scene? Why does this work for him? Roof to be fixed. This afternoon, I've been allowed to sit in on the family's monthly meeting. What else? <laughs> we need to keep up on the vacuuming daily for allergies and stuff. As well as being the forum for making decisions big and small. Any projects? It's an opportunity to air any grievances. How about Arlo's morning crying? I'm gonna How are you doing on, on it? I'm going to work on letting him cry. We're I'm working work on it. it. Just let him cry. It's easier said than done. I'm, I'm good at letting him cry. Yeah, well, you're, across, you're also across the whole house. You're not <laughs> hearing it right. No, but even before with the other kids, I, I mean... Yeah, that was really <laughs> annoying, actually. So it's not a bonus here. Yeah. I'm like having hot flashes while my kids are crying and he's just like, it's fine. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Gotta get through it. <laughs> it's not okay. Th these are questions for all families. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's just interesting to see how it plays out when there are three of you. Yeah. yeah. 
So how often do you have these meetings? Once a month. Just to check in? Yeah. Sometimes they get heated. Emotionally charged. I get frustrated with Christopher when he doesn't put the kids to bed the way I do it, or the time that I do it, or how he feeds them. <laughs> and I get frustrated with uh, the amount of cups that Linda uses throughout the day. We do so much. I do so much in the house. That's his job. I'm sorry. That's your job. You do the dishes. That's how you contribute. So that's why she piles them up. Yeah. She wears her shoes in, inside the house. Yeah, also that is not negotiable. I... Is there anything, sort of the fundamentals? Do you disagree on anything there? I mean, a big one that's coming up right now is whether or not um, we want to stay in Florida. Okay. Yeah. We don't know how that would work and what that would look like, but I mean, Florida doesn't feel like the place to stay and raise our family and raise our kids. School shootings, which are outrageous. Women's rights. Women's rights. Gay rights. <laughs> Gay rights. In 2023, Florida expanded its controversial so-called Don't Say Gay Bill, which prohibits discussing LGBTQ plus issues in schools statewide. I guess you need to take into consideration your kids are going to, you know, grow up and if their peers, folks, hold those views. Yeah, exactly. Well, I guess it's more of fear of the unknown of, like, you know, what they'll be exposed to right. or, you know, and or made, you know, made fun of or, you know, who knows, you know. Clearly, there are many angles to consider when you live in a parent in triangle and there are big decisions to be made. You know, I think the current setup is definitely in its infancy. Whilst lots of things work, there are going to be hurdles that they're going to have to overcome. So, is it sustainable? I don't know. In Southern Florida, I'm exploring where the last in domestic utopia is a reality for this family of two mums and one dad. Chris? Yeah. Am I all right to come in? Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually just, just making my bed and I'm about to fold a bunch of my laundry. Hedonistic lifestyle. <laughs> Chris, you thought you were going to live this life and you've ended up living something like this is completely different yeah. to what you had in mind. Yeah. What was it really like when your wife told you, look, I'm, I'm gay? So, well, it didn't happen quite like that. Okay, so she approached me with, I think I'm bi. And I remember that it was totally out of the blue uh -huh. because we had already been together for quite some time. I think she was feeling it, but she didn't know how to say it because of the pain. I think I came to her and I said, you're not bi, you're not straight, you're definitely gay, you're definitely a lesbian. Of course, I went through it too with her, it was a discovery process for both of us. It must have been really difficult for you at well, times, like so this is your wife. That, that was when the pain started. One part of our relationship was, we both started realizing it was over and that was 100% painful. For, for both of us. In the beginning, for sure, it was like, you know, getting the notifications on my phone of like, of us like two years before or four years before, because we had been together for a while. So there were like, there's so many memories and photos. I was in it for, for life, you know? And um, we, we sat down and we're like, okay, so now what? Mm -hmm. Do we have to split all of our assets down the middle and buy another home? And then we gotta trade the kids every other weekend? So we know people that have gone through divorce, and and when you talk to them about their own experiences, it's it's all negative, and staying together for the sake of the children, and that's not what we what we did. As like that is not us staying in the same home for the kids. We're staying in the same home because we are capable of doing it, and we want to. Mm. So, so what would you say to those people who are thinking, what is Chris really getting out of this? I get to see my kids every day, and I have a partnership, a co-parenting partnership that is healthy. I, I don't see anything negative about it. It won't work for everybody, and that's okay. Do you think those that love you 
were worried that you would find it too difficult or too painful? I think they were more worried about, for example, how are you going to date? Like, what do you say to them? By the way. Yeah. By the way, I have three kids. Oh, and I'm married, technically. We're going to get divorced. Oh, and we live together. <laughs> She's like, got a guy, bye. And I practiced like how I would explain my situation. And I agreed that like I would say it right away. I'm trying to think, if I met someone mm -hmm. and I was really into him and I really fancied him, and, I, and then he's like, oh, by the way, <laughs> Stacey, I still live with my wife. I'd be like, ooh. ooh red ooh. flag. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel so awkward about coming to my boyfriend's house and having to hang out with his wife. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It is awkward. <laughs> I did learn very quickly. Um, and I, I kind of expected it. Um, dating was going to be more difficult for our own family situation. Chris happens to have a date with a woman tonight. As it's still early days of the relationship, a lot of collective thought is going into his sartorial choices. Okay, finishing ironing one shirt. Is he doing a fashion show for us? So he sort of genuinely wants your input. Yeah, like he always has we have been good like taste. That. We have he, he and I have similar taste. I say in, in, in clothing, in women, in women, <laughs> and like a lot of things. The first time I met him, I almost was like, this guy is like a male version of me almost. Yeah. Chris, we're ready. Okay, shirt one. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Love this yeah. for you. What color shoes are you going to wear? Black. The black? It's all black? Like all black. Okay. All right, that's shirt one. Long legs. Chris, you look great. <laughs> all right. Love the this shirt. One. Are things like this ever weird for you? Yeah, yeah like they, I have to say that, like, I get that people don't get it, you know? Like, I also didn't get it. I definitely wasn't like, I'm going to get married and then don't get divorced and then I'm going to have a girlfriend and then I'm going <laughs> to, we're all going to live together. Like, that just was not the plan, you yeah. know? You guys figured it out together first before you let anyone else, which I think is why your foundation is so strong. And Ooh, shirt number two. I like That's that cool. One. That's like daytime. That's yeah. a daytime shirt. I really like that one. I actually like that I one. Know I know you like would. that one. It looks really comfortable. Yeah, I'm going to go with the second one, honestly. I want to see what else. I want you to try the flower one on. So far, this the is my favorite one. out of the two. You like the first one, I can tell. For dinner, I think this is a good, good pick. Yeah, because if you get something on it, you won't be able to tell. <laughs> <laughs> get a bit of salsa down it. She'll have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> <laughs> Because I wonder if he just looks at you two, and you two are so obviously really into each other. He never had that with you. He definitely has um, mentioned that, yeah. you know, he says... The both of us. Yeah, he yeah. says, you know, like, it may not be so easy for me to meet someone and fall head over heels in love with them, and I might, you know, it might take me some time to find what you guys have. Ooh... This is for like a theme party. It's very busy. It's an optical illusion. It like it makes you. <laughs> it's catchy though. Um, are we gonna say which ones we like the most now? Two. Yeah, I quite. It's between one and two. Agreed. I and like one. Three. What do yeah. you feel the part in? Yeah. What? Tonight, actually, number two. As yeah. Well. Yeah. I like it a lot. You're so handsome. Oh, you. <laughs> you look fantastic. Do you, you want to have his baby? <laughs> Oh, baby. Done that. In yeah. fact, I'm the only lady on this sofa that you don't have a child with. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you're both coming back here tonight. I don't want any sex because I'm in the living room. <laughs> I mean, the house is pretty, pretty uh, the door does it. Don't make it job. awkward for me, Chris. Do yeah, not make it not. awkward. Please do not, okay? Don't anyway. you dare. <laughs> <laughs> she's at the door. Hope she likes the shirt. Have fun. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So girls, give me the lowdown. <laughs> what do we think of Chris's girlfriend? We care obviously so much about Christopher. Uh -huh. And it's just like when your best friend starts dating someone, you want them to be the best possible person for them. And so obviously, 
we're protective of him. And I think that's really what it is. Sometimes maybe a little overprotective. Oh. Matty, give it to me straight. We don't want him to settle. Right. And I know that like our situation for some reason just happened to be like picture perfect. You know, I don't know. We just got really lucky. And mm. we want that for him too. Yeah. We care about him a lot. We love him. And, uh, do you love him, Matty? I love him. Do you? I do. In how so? In like a like a best friend kind of love, you know, like a like a yeah, like a best friend or good friend, someone you you know I genuinely care about him. Chris, Linda, and Maddie seem to be inextricably linked to each other's past, present, and future. This is uh, when they got married. Stop! How gorgeous! Mm. Oh this my! Is he looks stuns here. So you got married in red? Yeah. Yet, could it be that a new relationship for Chris is the thing that most impacts the balance they all work so hard to maintain? As a guest sleeping in the living room of the two mums, one dad household, I'm grateful not to have been woken up by Chris and his new girlfriend, who stayed over last night after a successful day. Mima's birthday! It's Nanny's birthday! Yeah, we got her Mima. Mima! That's exciting! How old is she gonna be, do you know? Three! <laughs> Three! Today, we're heading to Linda's childhood home to meet Linda's and Maddie's side of the family. A chance for me to find out the extended family's thoughts on what the future might hold for the threesome. This is my mom's house. Oh, it is? Did yeah. you grow up here? I grew up here. Right. My mom and Steve. Steve. I'm the husband. Nice to meet you. You likewise. Thank you for having me. That's my grandma. Barbara, I'm Stacy. Stacy, okay. How are nice you? To really nice to meet you. I think sometimes people can assume that different generations have very different points of view. Their setup, would that have ever worked for you? No. 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 Absolutely no, no. not. Barbara, no. No, no, no. No, no. no. no, no. <laughs> it was a surprise, but I was okay with it. I looked at her kids, because I was concerned, and I was like, he gets to stay too, and it works. All of them together, it works. Mm -hmm. As Linda's stepfather, Steve has watched the family evolve. So I wonder if he thinks there's a weak spot in the parenting triangle. Well, I'm, I'm certainly concerned for Chris all the time, right? I don't, I don't really understand how he feels. So anytime you lose your love, it's got to be hard, right? So that's something he has to deal with. I believe him when he tells me he's happy. You and do? Yes, I do. I believe him when he tells me he's happy. I don't believe that he was happy that it happened at all. Chris has made a decision to have another child now. It's a big commitment to make to have a child, much less to have a child with two separate women in the same relationship. Who, who am I to say who you should love? Even though I have a Christian background, and, and that's really, people say, how do, you, uh, how do you handle a Christian background? And I said, man, who, who am I to say what you should do? What do you think Chris gets out of this living arrangement? Well, Why I think do you that's think he's the toughest part of it. I think that's the toughest part of it. You know, Chris has been pursuing relationships, so I think that will happen when his girlfriend or fiance or whoever he has a relationship with, what happens when she says, hey, let's go. You ask me what I think? I don't see him staying. No, I mean, that would be, he's going to have his own life, you know. Unless, unless, of course, they move in together and buy a bigger house, and who knows, maybe that happens. Maybe it's completely different, right? I can't imagine, you know, it's, but it, I haven't been able to imagine this. Next to arrive is Maddie's mum, Marina. Hello, everybody. Oh, and no wonder it's so dark. Who I've heard isn't usually shy about voicing her opinions on her daughter's unorthodox lifestyle choices. So, Marina, I would love to hear your thoughts on your Maddie's living arrangements. Originally, when they first met, I had my reservations. I was a little scared. I was worried. It was a whole new family dynamic. My reservations were, though, how is this going to work? Right. With the three 
adults. One of my concerns was when the children start going to school and they, the first thing they usually do in kindergarten is draw a picture of your family. Okay, let's see. There's mama and there's bonus mama and then there's daddy. There's my brother, Owen, and then there's Arlo. And they're gonna sort of wonder, you know, well, can you explain how this family works? And children don't, you know. So my concern is that the children be prepared for what society may not embrace. Yeah. And Maddie, you know, she, she went through an awful lot in middle school and, and high school because of her lifestyle. Maddie, were you nervous to tell your mom about your plans, your living uh, plans? Nerve a little bit. I think just, I don't know if nervous is the word. I just knew that she was going to have her reservations initially, you know. And I finally said, I'm not going to get a chance. We're supposed to go out for dinner or something to talk about things. So we're going to talk about it right now. And then now I said, this is what my concern is. I laid it right out. I said, what happens in a year or two and Maddie, uh, this isn't working? What happens? You have a child to think about. You have three children to think about. I said, you know, we have to be the adults in the room here. What's the deal? I said, I just, I'm just telling you, you need to have thought all this out. Because nothing is going to be worse for the children than having this blow up. Your adults are expected to handle it, but this, the child, they, they need to know they're secure. Mm -hmm. And especially if they're growing up as brothers, I don't want to see them pulled apart, mm -hmm. okay? They're a unit. There's that saying, isn't there, like three's a crowd. Do you think, and I think this is a legitimate question, do you think it's possible for all three of them to feel completely equal and completely fulfilled? I think that, you know, uh, I worry about Christopher because, you know, he's, he's going to need uh, perhaps more in life than just living with the threesome, um, the three of them, and he's entitled to be happy, mm -hmm. and I don't know how that's going to change because they're committed to the kids, mm -hmm. and whatever Christopher ends up doing, um, it's fine with me, okay? Just as long as the integrity of those relationships remain constant. I am one of these people who always go to the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario was, God forbid, something happened to my daughter. And then Linda and Chris, something happens between them. If that happens, I need to know I have Arlo. I need to have access to Arlo because he's my only, my grandson. Maddie, we need to move Marina into the family home. <laughs> oh my, next generation home. Yes. Oh yes, we're gonna buy a next generation home. I can have the mother-in-law suite. We'll buy a house together. I'll get the suite in the back. And then you can get the suite. I'm sorry. Sorry, Mom. And Sandy on one of them and me on the other. And you got the family right there. Oh, I love it. I don't do dishes. I'm sorry, Steve will have to do the dishes. <laughs> I have thought throughout the weekend how there may come a time when, you know, the kids are older and Chris might start to feel a bit more redundant in that family home because it's going to be him living with his ex-wife and her girlfriend. And, you know, he may fall sort of head over heels with someone who doesn't want to subscribe to this situation. It's my last morning at the house of two mums and one dad. Call bus six. I'm a mum now, so this feels like mid-afternoon. And I'm up early to help with the chores. We've got boxes, for recycling and then trash. All right, I'm out of here. Is that you gone, Maddie? Yeah, oh. You go. So great meeting you. Listen, likewise. Safe travels. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have you back anytime. You guys are welcome, all right? For this family, leaving the state of Florida might be the next big step. But I want to ask Chris how he feels about what must be the most immediate challenge ahead. Some people might be wondering 
how sustainable this is because it's working it's, right now but in a couple of years time are you ever going to uh, really be able to so move on with your love life nothing nothing is permanent so uh we will continue with the situation and our living arrangements as long as it makes sense i've started multiple businesses and that's something you learn very quickly as an entrepreneur you have to evolve um, and that's the same with relationships that's the same with family units why aren't more people doing this if it's so great do you know it's, what i mean it's because it's scary um it's scary it's scary doing something that people from the outside don't approve with most people care about what their community thinks they care about what their parents think they and 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 that's not to say that we're we don't care we do but we're thinking about ourselves before i leave i have one more question for the person this setup perhaps seems to benefit the most do you think you and Maddie will get married you know i have to get divorced first Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, we definitely talk about um, spending our lives together. And what role do you imagine Chris would play on the day, but also in your marriage? I kind of thought we might ask him to be the person who weds us. So <laughs> I haven't even told him about that yet. Maddie and I have talked about that, but that would be kind of special, you know? Oh, wow. But... I think that would kind of tie us all together anyways. You have two adults that really genuinely love you. I mean, what's your secret? <laughs> why, why, why are they so in love with you, Linda? Um, I think I, I really do just wear my whole heart on my sleeve. I appreciate them, and I think that's also why Christopher and I still have this, able to have this relationship. I have nothing to, like, hide. How would you describe your relationship with Chris right now, like today? We definitely fight. I've tried very different variations of motherhood and they didn't suit me. You know, this does. And this is going to sound really strange, right? Um, but like, he, I love him like family. Like, obviously we are s still married um, and I would not marry my brother, but I, I adore him as such, you know, it's not romantic. Um, but I care about him, and so we're just trying to make it work as best as possible. Gang, it's time to say goodbye. Oh no! We the drama. The drama. I know. You have been a dream. Thank of you. I'm really, really grateful. Chris, thank you, mate. Thank you. This isn't for everyone. There are so many families that would not be able to subscribe to this, and I think they know that. Um, but it. I, I, I do think it works for them. You have an air um, mattress here for you anytime. It's a luxe <laughs> double air mattress. Yeah. Um, and send my love to Maddie and the boys. I will, they're gonna miss you. Oh, likewise. Take care, yeah? I don't think this will work forever. Ready, one, two, three. For now, I can totally see the benefits. <laughs> right, gang, all the love. Thank you so, so much, Same yeah? Travel. Take care. Ciao for now. Thank you.